Hello guys, in today's video I am going to demonstrate about a new vulnerability called uh, uh, Remote Code Execution in Microsoft Windows using the MS HTML and this vulnerability actually uh, the attacker needs a crafted Microsoft Office document and which lets you to uh, execute uh, the remote code executions by leveraging the ActiveX. You can read more about this vulnerability in this article from Trend Micro. So before I will go and start performing this attack on one of my uh, my systems, I would like to explain you this uh, actually relies on the ActiveX feature, and uh, it can be easily evade to the existing uh, security control, especially the email gateway. Because I haven't seen any email gateway which is blocking the Microsoft Windows document, regardless, uh, because we are not using here the macros. Macros most probably those are blocked. But uh, to, from a Microsoft perspective, they are giving you some kind of workaround, which they uh, they they say that you can disable the ActiveX control via group policy. They also say that uh, if you can't do that, you can perform the some of the uh, registry changes which can mitigate this attack that is somewhere we have the workaround but uh, as you know uh, this workaround implementing in a thousand PC is not uh, you know the applicable when the people are working from home so most probably the most of the organization those are vulnerable for it so let's jump into the Kali machines and try to generate this malicious uh, document and we will be leveraging uh, this code from this guy, which his name is Lockbyte. Lockbyte and has an excellent POC. Uh, for this POC, this uh, I have checked that this POC actually uh, can be blocked by the antivirus or any other any other systems uh, which is in the place, even the EDR solutions. But uh, Arthur also gave you that reproduce options, which you can, you know, evade the existing defenses by reproducing in a different way. Because uh, as you know that uh, uh, the documents has its MD5 hash or SHA hashes, and these can be changed uh, uh, once you customize these documents. So I will be following all of these steps to show you that how we can uh, you know produce this malicious document after producing this malicious document uh, the attacker usually transfer these malicious documents uh, uh, using the social engineering and these social engineering attacks because uh, we are not leveraging the macro and any other behind the scene technology this can be easily bypassed uh, let's uh, try to understand how we can generate this all right, uh, now I'm on a Kali machines, and uh, as you can see uh, in your screen, I have cloned this directory, and after cloning, the, I have moved to that uh, that particular directory, and now I am looking for uh, some of the key inputs, like what is my IP address in this case, because uh, that is needed. Uh, I will show you that why we need it, uh, which we have is 153.153 in my lab environments. Now, what I will be doing is uh, I will just uh, try to take this IP address and uh, will generate this uh, uh, the payload which is called the malicious doc. In this case, we have to have uh, some of the commands. So I have already created this command, and you can also find from this uh, uh, GitHub repository. So I will be, I you know executing this command and what this command is going to do this command actually uh, going to create us a malicious payload, payload as you can see the option the malicious payload is going to be created and it find the test dot uh, which sorry our test forward slash calci dot dll uh, this calci dot dll can be changed because right now the objective of calci dot dll is to open a calculator and uh, as a malicious attacker they can you can say that they can you know ask for executing a payload they can ask for a reverse connections they can do whatever they would like because that value is going to be changed so here you can see that uh, uh, the generating the malicious payloads and that payload has been successfully generated uh, one another thing there are a couple of files so you only just need to transfer this doc 
command dot docs file to the to the target. But the rest of the file will be delivered, you know, using the command and control connections. Uh, this file will be served by my machine. Uh, afterwards, when the attacker, uh, when the sorry, when the victim click on these files, especially document or docs file, the rest of the files will be delivered over there. So we have created the malicious payload. Now we have to deliver this payload to uh, the victim. So in order to do that, I will be, uh, you know, creating another uh, command prompt here. So this is another command prompt and I will move to the directory which is uh, or I split it the tunnel. I, I am a little bit confused why he, my keyboard is stopped working. So let me reconnect the keyboard. Yes, now it's working. And I will be using, I am going to this directory and in this directory we have, there is a there is a folder or you can say directory called out so i will be going to the out directory okay now we are in the out directory let's see what file is there so we have the document dot uh, mm, document dot docs file and this is the file which we would like to deliver to the victim so we will be using this python uh, python 3 hyphen m as a http server I will be using the default port which is 8000 in my case. So this 8000 uh, is there. So let's jump into the victim machine and try to download this uh, document uh, dot uh, docs file. So here is the victim machine in my case and I will be logged into the victim using victim credentials. But in real life, as you know, uh, these all these attacks happens using the spear phishing. So attacker knows your email address. They can deliver this using the email. And once it is delivered to you, then it's very rare that you can inspect all of these phases because uh, attacker has already customized all the phases to evade the existing defenses. So here I will be going to download this file which is using port number 8000. 8, here is the file. I have downloaded this file. So before I will click on this file, what I will be uh, doing in this case, I will go, uh, go back to the Kali machine and uh, I will be uh, coming here and try to execute the server. Because this file is going to download some of the some of the cap files and other files which you will see Python 3 and uh, exploit.py and then I will be using the host port number 80 this is the command so this is another server so what I will do I will close this server the down one and I click exit so we have only one server right now now you will see that uh, once I will open this file and how many, uh, you know, the command and control, how this command and control is going to be executed. So let's go to the server, uh, victim and open this file. Okay. Now it's opening in a protected view. This is one of the view which can, you know, still uh, secure your end users but unfortunately sometimes the end user try to see what is there in the picture so once they click enable editing you see enable editing actually had opened this command prompt which is cmd.exe and now calculator have been uh, calculator has been opened here now go back to the your Kali machines you can see that uh, there are a lot of files which is header was requested what.html and these were not supported then they look for the another one get word.html they look for different methods because you can see in right now the main one is word.cap this is the file which was uh, generated to when we created this malicious payload if you remember this word.cap file this is the malicious cap file and uh, this file is 
causing was the, the you know uh, the victim when we open this victim file and this was the file which was requested and we delivered this file over the cnc and you can see the calculator here similarly the attacker can uh, you know ask for the other files or malicious payloads and can also uh, request for the multiple items or can add the new users can execute can bypass the existing defenses there are a lot of hit and trial which i don't want to dig into it but just i wanted to show you that how sophisticated this attack is and this can be easily evaded uh, you know to the existing defenses based on uh, uh, the, the skill set the attacker has because uh, most of the times uh, they don't use the default payloads so we have the reproduce option here and the reproduce uh, let me take you to the reproduce and we'll uh, show you how you can reproduce or you can bypass the existing defenses just give me a minute please all right uh, now it is connected to the internet and uh, i will click on the reproduce.md file now you can see here the generating the documents where you need to go and how you need to change the ip addresses not only the local ip addresses and then generating the document what is the command it go to the mal directory and generating the malicious cabbage you can see here which is the uh, this one is uh, uh, written in sheep c sharp and you can see here this is the command which we are trying to execute so this code is written in the c sharp and you can change this value and i try to execute uh, another payload or something like you know different exe or you can add the net user add command to use uh, the current user into or creating a new users but most of the time the attacker don't want to introduce the noise in the network they will be taking the leveraging uh, you know advantage of existing or living of the land tool so that uh, the noise can be reduced and they can evade the existing defenses this is the command which is used for you know producing this calc.dll and uh, they have already specified that how you can bypass a lot of other things you can obfuscate using the html which is tofuscate.py uh, and this, they have already you know created one um, one html file you can look into it so here are the steps so if the new file which is you can say the new cap file you can evade using the defenses by by calling the different exe by adding the new users by you know by by passing the existing uh, security controls if something is you know whitelisted so there are a lot of you uh, know options which you can take and advance take uh, take benefit it but you need to understand that this is not a, a simple attack and uh, as this is taking the advantage of activex the microsoft recommend that you should disable the activex feature uh, using uh, using the group policies or uh, even the registry here is that uh, the group policy options to, to disable the activex control by a group policy you can see here and also there is another option to disable the activex uh, initial system by a registry key this is the second option there is no patch available at this point of time when i was when i am recording so this is the two work around but think about where you have the thousands of systems and how you can manage all of them uh, and some of them are working from home some of the, in a different locations not everywhere you can enforce your group policy so that's it in this video hope you enjoyed if it is don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and share this video with another group but take care we'll catch you in the next video thank you